Ladies and gentlemen, before we get to our closing speeches, we have the gift once again of our poet, uh, our brother, Obed Dube, who opened for us uh, on the first day of the fifth African Philanthropy Conference, and he's made his way back to us. So I'd like to yield the podium for a few minutes, two, three minutes, to give him the opportunity to once again take us into narrative and really share some of his thoughts with us. Let's give Albert a big round of applause. There were no, African, there were no countries in Africa before colonization. There were states led by respected traditional leaders. Each state had its own language equally respected. There was no corruption, fraud, matter, and hate in Africa before colonization. There were no churches in Africa before colonization. We were Christians, but worshiping our own God in our own African way. There were no schools in Africa before colonization. Polycom was our characteristic, as we wanted to multiply. Good afternoon, everyone. I cannot hear you. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a profound honor to be here. I love you all. And my name is Ope Tube. My name is Ope Tube, the African poet. I want to recite my last poem for today or for this event. It was a profound honor to be invited to recite a poem here. Uh, its title says, Mama Africa. Africa is rich in brown, fertile soil, hectares and hectares of green fields. She has beautiful rainforests. She is the home of many birds and species that nicely and proudly sing so loud. She has all vital natural resources that are the spinal cord of the world's economy. Africa, the main contributor to the world economy, the breadbasket for all continents, the provider for all necessities in the world. Without African resources, the world will perish. Africa, the most beautiful continent on Earth. When you think of fresh air, the only continent where you relieve your stress is Africa. The only continent where people are treated equally regardless of their tribe and race is Africa. In Africa, you don't feel at home because Africa is home to everyone. From Cape to Cairo, Africa and Africans are unique. Africa is a grand continent. It's a beautiful continent full of diversity of cultures. The everyday cultural exchange between people of different cultures is the most interesting thing about Mama Africa. In Africa, you learn something new every day. Ubuntu dwells, love prevails, nature speaks, talent reigns. A multi-religion continent and multilingual continent is Africa. A multicultural, religious and lingual continent where all languages are treated equally is Africa. Language is not a barrier as we speak more in action than in words. African men are handsome. They are the most hardworking men on earth. African women are the most beautiful women on earth. They are naturally romantic, charming and sexy. The spirit of Ubuntu is among um, themselves. African food is not processed. It's natural, delicious and nutritious. It serves as natural remedies. Africans who prioritize and stick to their African menu lives longer. Our culture is our priority and identity. We greet each other with a handshake. Our elders are the most precious people regardless of their age. We don't take our elder people to all people's home for care. We need their presence as we acquire wisdom from them. They are our first court. They are served first during our meals. After having a meal, we are appreciated by thanking meal providers. Silence is an African value. We receive gifts with both hands. Personal space is anti-African. A single room can have 10 people living together. Five people can share a glass of wine in Africa. Five people can share a cigarette. Two people can share a seat in a public transport. Five people can share a plate of meal. Ten women can share one man. That's polygam in Africa. We don't have cousins in Africa. We don't have half-brothers and half-sisters in Africa. It's appalling, taboo, and un-African. We are sisters and brothers. An extended family member is a sibling. A neighbor is a family member. In Africa, we don't have a mate or a cotton boy. They are family members. We always cook extra meal in case we have visitors. They are always visitors in Africa. They don't have to make an appointment for them to be included in a meal. It's un-African. We have animal synonyms. That's how we are related to them. When I 
see an animal of my surname, I see a brother or a sister, I protect it. We Africans and animals exist together in love. If all comes together with our connection. Africa is remarkable eye-catching places where you enjoy. The African continent is full of deserts, jungles, highlands, and savannah dryland. Kilimanjaro Mountain in Tanzania, the tallest mountain in Africa. The fountain, Mountain Fako, mentioned in Cameroon, Sibeba Rock in the Kingdom of Eswatini, the biggest rock in Africa. Serengeti National Park where you see lions lying on top of trees, sun bathing themselves. The only place on earth where you see a lion climbing a tree. The only place on earth where you hear lions roaring just kilometers away from your homestead. Gorillas in Uganda, Rwanda, and Democratic Republic of Congo. Senator Close Ranger to Pindi National Park. The Great Pyramids of Egypt. Great Zimbabwe ruins that shows Africa's great architecture. The Ropens Islands in South Africa, Cape Town, and the iconic Top Mountain National Park. The Okavango Delta, where the lost water from Angola through Namibia splitting in Botswana. We have female deserts, a term used to describe deserts that produce flora and fauna. Namik Naukluf deserts and June 45 in Namibia and Kalahari in Botswana. <coughs> Lake Malawi, clear water is the largest lake on earth. Beautiful warm water of the Indian, Indian Ocean. South Luanga, a den of leopards where you can see more than 15 leopards. You are assured of not missing them. Chobe National Park in Botswana, where there are the largest herds of elephants. Our big and beautiful rivers. Nile River, Congo River, Niger River, Zambezi River, Musu Watunya, the smoke that thunders. Sunrise and sunset is only seen in Africa every time, not seasonally. Take an African out of Africa, you'll never take Africa out of an African. Give an African an opportunity, he maneuver, thrive and shine. Africa my motherland, Africa my continent, Africa my home, Africa my pride. Hospitality is Africa's identity. Being kind combines with African culture. Africa means welcome, Africa means home away from home. Africa means feel free, Africa means refreshing. Africa means those who love Africa and Africans. God bless Africa, Africans by people. Africans by heritage, Africans by descent. We have our own African founding fathers who are with the Lord now. They will be forever our iconic figures that we always cherish. Francis Nkwame Nkrumah, Julius Kambara Kenyerere, John Pombe Makufuli, the Paul Toza, Chinua Achebe, the father of African literature, Solomon Matlango, Kunte Kinta, Colonel Muama Gaddafi, Kamika Capral, Marcus Kavey, Hail Selassie, Thomas Noel East Torres Sankara, Kenneth K.K. Kaunda, Joshua Mkabugo Nyongoro Ramatatsi Nkomo Father Zimbabwe, Martin Tembisile Chris Hani, Robert Manga Luso Sobuke, Harry Kala, Winnie Nomi Samo Matigisela Mandela, Solomon Samora Moses Machel, Seth Seretsa Kama the Third, King Sopuza Nina Begune Nebagangwane, King Mosho Shoe, Inko Sushaga, Ushunga Nigandaba, Oashunga Magnulumeni, Utegla Ofas Bagano Mkapi, Betegla Bethe Semlo Fini, Betegla Chaga Gusa Gaiba in Gossi, Koreza Unetesega, or the offers of an intended Bapulusa, or Sulisa, Falani, Gani, Abatalabas, Bonella, Utana Porto, Wom Kabai, Halasha. Thank you so much. It will be an honor if all of you here follow me on my social media platform. I am Opet Tube, the African poet. Thank you so much. Asante Sana. A beautiful energy to start our conversations, a beautiful energy to end our conversations. Ashley and Sandile, do I have you on standby? Won't you quickly, very quickly help me with this mural, just put it in the center, very quickly gentlemen, please, thank you. We're going to transition from those beautiful words and I want to bring to your attention a mural that has been silently in the background being worked on by the artist Simba Mangera, who specializes in interpreting emotion and narrative in the form of art. And um, I'm going to ask you gentlemen just to take, take a step back so I can see, uh, because Simba has actually sent us an interpretation of what it is that we are seeing. So you will notice the Victoria Falls in the background, right at the center, locating the important conversations we've just had. You will notice that Africa sits at the center of the currency note that is at the center that depicts or illustrates a sense of giving, 
but with many of the challenging uh, confrontations we've heard about where we locate ourselves within global philanthropy, you will see the number five at the corner of that note, denoting, of course, that this is the fifth African philanthropy conference that we find ourselves at. The hands or the arms are intentionally circular. That speaks to the ability to create uh, sustaining and infinite ecosystems that keep on giving. And ladies and gentlemen, I could go on and on, but more than anything else, this is the gift we've received from Simba Mangera that captures the conversations we've been had here. Can we give Simba a round of applause, please? Thank you, gentlemen. You can uh, locate it back in the, in the corner for me. I appreciate that. I'm going to call up a few speakers now who are going to extend the closing remarks for us as we begin to wrap. I'm going to invite uh, Mr. Evans. Yeah, I'm going to start with the video, but let me ask Mr. Evans to please join me on the podium. Uh, to kindly please take a seat uh, next to me here. And also let me call on Mr. Ibrahim Asal to also please come and take his seat uh, in the front. While Mr. Ibrima makes his way up, let me bring to our attention the first of these speeches, which is in the form of the video, a video that's been shared by the chair of Trust Africa. Uh, Madam Kumba Turo could not be with us today. Let's turn our focus to the screens and Mr. Sal, when you're ready, if you can please join us on the podium. Thank you so much, technical team. Greetings and thank you. Um, talking to you from Senegal, where I'm attending and facilitating the Feminist Summer University. And just to say thank you to each of you who came to participate to the African Philanthropy Conference. I really, really wish I was able to join you. I hope you are inspired, fully inspired by the generous nature that surrounds you all that waterfalls. I miss being there and I miss being with friends, comrades, people who inspire me so much in this work. Miss really each of you. But I'm sending these greetings from this space and I know that I should share with you some of the voices that I've been hearing here from movements, organizations, from feminist group, from people who receive the least of philanthropy money. They're saying that we need different ways of operating philanthropy. That we need to recognize the gifts and the participation of the people in the change that is happening. That we need philanthropies that gives much more than the 5% that is required to have tax exemption, that we need philanthropies that listen to the people that they are giving to, that we need philanthropy that do not put too much burden on the people that are asking for money, whether it's on applications or reports that we need philanthropies that are interested in justice, in movement building, in really questioning and defying relationships of power, whether they are based on genders, on race, on class, on abilities. 
we want African philanthropies to build something different than what we are experiencing in the global philanthropy and it is possible so those voices that I've been hearing here today is what I'm sharing with you I'm sure these conversations have been there it is now about action it's about what will we do differently so that we go at the core of the issues so that we uproot injustices really where they are thank you again a round of applause ladies and gentlemen Professor Moyo, can I invite you to please uh, join us uh, on the podium? But the question is, please go, come ahead. Uh, come. Thank you very much, sir. The question for Madame Kumba is loud and clear. What will we do from here on? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to invite now Mr. Evans uh, Okini to please come and address us in his short two minutes. Um, the flight brought us in from various parts of the continent, various parts of the globe. We've had amazing conversations from the academic uh, conference to the philanthropy conference that we've had, the awards that we did the other day, the various site visits that we have enjoyed, we hope so, uh, to where we are now. And the big question as highlighted by my sister is what next? Because we can be here, we can make these many issues that we are discussing, the many efforts that we are putting in building movements, in doing all the amazing things that we have done over the last few days. But this investment can only make sense if we are very clear and if we are very intentional around answering the question what next? So looking at the partnerships that we have been talking about, the climate change adaptation, uh, conversations around impact investment, gender equality, technology and in innovation, uh, the specificities around, for example, women in philanthropy, youth in philanthropy, what we are going to do after this is there are very intentional efforts that we are putting in place as partners together with you with this collaborative around building very strategic engagements and these are in form of working groups around the specific issues that we have been discussing to national convenings that we are putting our efforts together in building so that as we infuse the top bottom approach in approaching these issues that we have been discussing, we also embrace a bottom up approach on the same. So from the working groups to the national interventions to the regional efforts that we are putting together all the way to other continental engagements that we are having in advancing these conversations. And I am here to just bring to our attention some of the few uh, convenings that are coming still ahead of us that will enable us to have platforms where we can advance the conversations that we are having and we've been having over the last few days, which is of course a culmination of other conversations that we have been having. So on the 27th to the 29th of October, and if you allow the technical team, please uh, project. Uh, the 27th to the 29th of uh, October in Marrakesh, Morocco, the Africa Philanthropy Forum will be hosting their annual forum. A round of applause for them. So it's a practical and available opportunity for us to advance the many deliberations, the many conversations that we have been having in this conference. Thank you so much. 85 days to go to that conference. Number two, how many of you enjoyed being here? Just by a show of hand. Uh, no, I think I've asked the wrong question. How many did not enjoy being here? 
So we all enjoyed. Oh, there's one person at the back. Not really. We all enjoyed it. So if we enjoyed being here, then we are promising you that we'll be back here on the 4th to the 8th of November for the APN assembly. Are we excited about that? Our faces don't show it. So we will be here. And our theme that we'll be bringing us here is around collective freedom from our collective struggles. And that is it uh, on uh, the, the, the screens that we are having. So we welcome you back to Victoria Falls for more conversations around what we are having, for more deliberate and practical engagements that we will be having around uh, the many issues that have brought us here. Um, next year, uh, in building these conversations from the national to the regional levels of the continent, we will be hosting the ninth East Africa Philanthropy Conference. Um, and we will share with you more details around that uh, in building this bottom-up approach to repositioning this continent for impact. Of course, the sixth Africa Philanthropy Conference, my seniors will talk about that, uh, when and where we are convening next. And so, thank you so much. We wish you the best as you travel back. We wish you the best in helping us, collaborating with us, in advancing these conversations that we have been having. God bless you. Thank you very much, Evans. Uh, speaking to the question of what's next, thank you for those highlights. Uh, Mr. Brimasol, let me invite you and give you the opportunity to come and share your closing remarks with us, please, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon. You know, where I come from, when you've had uh, a great experience, we say Alhamdulillah. And I think we can say Alhamdulillah. We've done it again, of course, by the grace of God, with all the hard work we've done. Uh, many, many things. Yesterday, I still remember when we have been asked, the panelists have been asked what, they, what stayed with them. Stigmata said, the food. The food was great. <laughs> The music was good. The falls, of course, you know, this is a world wonder. It will stay in our imaginations, in our minds, in our souvenirs forever. Uh, the cruise was fantastic yesterday evening. The conversations were extraordinarily rich. Uh, the conversations and the wisdom we've seen come through, particularly the Really, I think we are blessed to have had Mama Grasa with us, who didn't just come and do a formality. As you have seen, she sat through. She actually participated in the conversations. She sat through not only in the plenary sessions, but also in the parallel sessions. She's extraordinary. Yesterday, we were together on the boat doing the cruise, but every word she pronounced, you wish she wouldn't stop talking. Yeah. It is, it's a, it's a, I think we are blessed to have had people like her in our community. And we want to thank her once again for having taken the time to be with us. Uh, uh, you know, we been previous editions and a number of conversations before, we would spend a long time on definitions of what African philanthropy is. This time it came in a very interesting way in the conversation, you know, in the wisdom that people were sharing. Again, in what Mama Grasha was saying, I think it summarized it all when she said African philanthropy is about, it's about sharing. Uh, it's about sharing what we have, not waiting to have a lot to share. That we knew. In Wolof, um, uh, the expression nyokobok is when you give something to somebody and they thank you, the response to the thank you is not you are welcome, is nyokobok. And nyokobok literally means we, it, is, it is ours, it, it belongs to both of us, or all of us. It is your share of what is in my possession. So we have uh, that you know, rich conception, understanding, and practice of giving and sharing and philanthropy. Uh, and I think it speaks to the philosophy of Ubuntu, 
Nite in Wolof, uh, Moya in Mandinka, and in all of the languages that we know. Uh, and I think that is actually, as we were advised by Mama Grasha, is the foundation on which African philanthropy should continue to be grounded, including in its most modern forms and institutional forms. Uh, and I think that also speaks to the importance of the whole concept of solidarity and the concept of reciprocity. Uh, solidarity is actually, you know, foundational in what keeps societies together. Okay, uh, and I think in this you know, concept of Ubuntu, where I am because you are, that my existence is not even possible. Not let the world having a meaning if your existence is not, you know, a reality. Uh, and therefore, it means we have to somehow, somehow reclaim the concept of and the notion of. Solidarity. We have to reclaim it. It's been, you know, I think misused and uh, uh, perverted in so many different ways. But solidarity between our communities, solidarity between generations, solidarity internationally, solidarity across the global south, solidarity on the African continent, that it should be a defining feature of African uh, Pan-Africanism. Okay, and uh, it also speaks to the importance of the relationships that we have internationally. Uh, we should learn to live. At this time, I was having a conversation with Jerry Salola, Scott's dream, and I would like to thank him for, for, for making the point so clearly. That, I mean, solidarity is something we should be comfortable with. You know, international solidarity was part of what the left was proud of previously. Internationalism is what used to characterize progressive culture across the world. Uh, it somehow has been eroded through a number of mechanisms. Even globalization doesn't render it, you know, or notion of a global village. It all sort of doesn't speak to the strength and the power of solidarity. And I think we should reclaim it and give it its full meaning in the context in which we are, where we need to be in solidarity among ourselves. We sh it should be perfectly okay for people to get support from outside of the continent or from other parts of the continent or from those who have, you know, uh, you know and, uh, to, to those who, who do not have much. And, and, and I think it also means it's not a one-way thing. Everybody has something to offer. You know, Senghor, the president of Senegal, wasn't a revolutionary by any measure. But Senghor used to say, Universalism is meaningful only when it is a rendezvous of giving and taking, a rendezvous to donate and right? uh, And again, it means that everybody has something to offer. And that's what we are saying. Even the communities we work with, when we go to them, we should never, we should never believe one minute that we are the ones bringing some things to the communities and they have nothing to give back to us. I think that's, that's something that really should be out of our way of, of understanding and practicing philanthropy. Um, and uh, I think a few things that we need to say, um, which, which I think we need to improve upon a little bit. We've had the awards, and uh, the point about having more nominations from women was made by the chair of the award committee, Sarah Mokasa. I think that's really a very important point. Uh, but we also should remember that when we say African, we are not only focusing on those who are on the continent, we are also talking about, talking about those who are in the diaspora, uh, people of African descent, the historic diaspora, in the Caribbean, in Brazil, in the Middle East, in Asia, right? It should be possible for this conference in the award processes to recognize people who have practiced philanthropy or contributed to the advancement of philanthropy in those spaces in a very big way. I think that's the only way, time when we will be really truly speaking about Africanity in its entirety and its different you know, um, uh, uh, manifestations everywhere. Um, I, I think it's also important that we um, be a bit more, make more effort to be more inclusive. We tend to be too comfortable speaking the language that we are comfortable. English is dominating these spaces in a way that it should be unacceptable. Right? We take it for granted that everybody should be able to speak English and, and it's okay. The others have to make an effort to follow and, and, and understand it. it. That's not right. You know, there are other languages like Portuguese, like Arabic, like Swahili, and all the African languages. We cannot, of course, do a conference in all those languages, but we should make an effort to get the conference conducted in as many languages as we can, even if it is two or three or four, so that we just reflect the spirit. And whether it's, you know, uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's just something a point to make in terms of the improvements I think we need to do. Final point I want to make is, uh, it is about the future, right? Next frontiers. You know, I think Brian's, uh, we've got, uh, by the way, we, as you have all noticed, excellent sessions, excellent panels. We've got really excellent keynote speakers. 
you know, from the very first to the very last, you know, we've, we've you know, just seen what the, the kind of energy that each one of them injected to these conversations. And in Brian's uh, keynote speech, he told us what? <laughs> what is the future? The next frontier is what? It's about building the, filter, building the future we want. It's about building the future. Uh, of, it's, but it's about the building the future we want, the, the future we want for Africa and the future we want for the world as a whole. Uh, it means, of course, dealing with all the problems, whether it's climate or AI or all something. How do we prepare ourselves to make sure we handle all those issues as we build the future we want? Uh, it is therefore about transformation and moving from where we are today to that future and what role philanthropy can play in that movement towards the futures that we want to build. Uh, I'll end by just thanking a few people. The thank you uh, part of this closing will be done by Becky, the chair of the uh, conference committee um, and the secretariat. But I want to begin by thanking Becky, the chair, because he wouldn't thank himself. I think Becky deserves a round of applause you know, for, uh, for having really, 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 really demonstrated, you know, extraordinary leadership in this whole process and devoted a lot of energy, you know, just, just writing all the letters and responding to all the emails. Last year, we took the brunt of it from Dakar. It was him all the way attending all the committee meetings, and there were a lot of committees and a lot of meetings, right, and continuing to do his work. It was really, really great, and we definitely, at South Africa, are very proud of the relationship we have with CAPSI, more specifically, but with, with, with Becky, I think uh, it's important just to emphasize, it. and the secretariat he was working with. Uh, he will mention the members of the secretariat when he speaks, because I think it's for him to thank uh, his colleagues. I also want to thank my colleagues from Trust Africa, my own team, uh, who uh, have been on this, you know, f f over a very long period of time. This is part of our really, really core, 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 core programs. Like, it's no longer, it's not an event, it's not a project. We take it as a central part of what we do at Trust Africa. Building the African philanthropic community is a central part of the mission of Trust Africa. Like, we say it in different ways, but it comes to that. And I think it's just important to you know, to thank BRICS, the programs director, who was the chair of the programs committee this year, uh, and to thank the ITA, who is heading the operations uh, department of Trust Africa, who is also here in the room and uh, 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 working with logistics teams, and uh, thank all the, uh, the colleagues of Trust Africa, those who are here and those who are in Dakar and those who are in Harare who didn't come here because everybody couldn't come. Uh, but it's about, it's Rugiatu, it's Ogo, it's Isa, Aja, uh, it's Betule, uh, it's Gladys, Abda, Fatumata, you know, and uh, Mishar, of course, uh, and all of them, all of them. If I have forgotten any name, it's not because uh, it, 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 they haven't played an important role. It's Fatumata with the IT, all the accounts team, and all those who are in, in, uh, in uh, Trust Africa. Uh, so I would like really to thank them. And once again, uh, thank those who have honored us with their presence, all of you. Uh, Professor, I have you right in front of me. I just want to say thanks to Capsi again, and thank you, thank you very much for for not only making time to be here, but for all the contributions and for if continuing to support us and giving us all the, the space that we need. And, and thanks again to everyone for having contributed to making this conference a great conference. I think our ambition was this one, and we are thanking again God that we are getting there. We want every edition of this conference to be better than the previous ones. Uh, every edition will take us to a higher level of quality deeper levels of engagement, higher quality debates, and we are aiming at getting publications from this. It's, it may be then, therefore, an opportunity for me to thank again Wycliffe, who was heading the academic conference, and the whole CAPSI team, Jacob and all, the, all of them. Um, and, uh, um, but but uh, we want to get outputs from this, because it's a way of, for, very, 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 one very good way of shaping the, the debates that are here. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end here because I see Nozif looking at me. <laughs> but again, thanks a lot. It was great being together again. We'll be together again next year at the same time. Uh, and uh, uh, inshallah, we will make this the best avenue, I mean, the best rendezvous for philanthropy on this continent going forward. It's such a gift to listen to your elders as they talk about not only the things you've done well, but also where the opportunities to grow may be. 
And I just want to thank you for highlighting even the things that you know that we can do better. It's oftentimes at the end of these conferences, you only hear the glows and you don't hear the grows. And it was really beautiful to hear the glows and the grows in your talk. Very much appreciated. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me now to hand over to the conference chair as he extends his closing remarks and makes some special announcements as well. Over to you, Professor Moyo. Okay, thank you so much, Nozipo, and uh, good afternoon, colleagues, uh, friends, and esteemed uh, excellencies. What a week. We have come to the end of the conference. I hope everyone uh, enjoyed their time here in uh, Victoria Falls, Monsieur Tunya, the smoke that thunders. Uh, and hopefully everyone had the opportunity to go and see the falls. If not, please use the remaining uh, hours that you have to actually do that. Um, my role is very simple. It's really to give uh, thanks to everyone who has made this possible. Really everyone. We're thanking everyone, those who are here and those who are still you know, in, in, in the respective offices that might have remained behind, but they made a contribution to the success of the conference. I, I also want to start by thanking, of course, the various partners uh, that are part of this, and once again to thank Mosun from the Africa Philanthropy Forum, Stigmata from the Africa Philanthropy Network, Rachel from the Zambia Governance Foundation, uh, Eprima, of course, from Trust Africa, uh, Frank from the uh, AVPA, uh, as well as Alice Kanengoni from the Southern Africa Trust. Uh, I think it's important to, to restate this because this is a, a partnership that we developed precisely to deal with some of the political questions around collaborations in the continent and to demonstrate that as much as there is many beds in the sky, uh, the sky is still big enough for all of us to flourish, to collaborate, and the work that confronts us in the continent is far much bigger than those of us in the room. There are more than um, uh, a million uh, inhabitants of this continent, and so as much as we can do in our different corners, uh, that would help to lead us to a sustainable society, and I think the collaborations that we build are very important. Uh, so I wanted to really emphasize that. So Eprima and the team, thank you so much for you know, helping us to curate this. And I you have mentioned all the, the Trust Africa team members. But I, I want to emphasize again the thanks to Trust Africa colleagues. I want to thank Evans and your team uh, as well. Um, you know, part of what the East Africa Philanthropy Network does is to really build that, those building blocks to the continental understanding of philanthropy and your team and yourself and the insights and some of the roles that you play in this partnership are very important. I want to thank Mosun uh, as well as Mosun and the team uh, as, uh, again for, for, I mean for the uh, contribution, the efforts uh, that you put into this work. Stigmata and team, um, I may not know all of them by name, but I know that uh, uh, Tarisai uh, and Stigmata have been heavily involved uh, in this partnership. I know that Teresa might have already left the room, but it's important to, uh, to mention here. Uh, Alice and Raymond from the Southern Africa Trust, uh, they've also been part of this uh, conversation and helping to curate. Of course, the CAPSI team, um, you know, um, we are almost all of us here. I think there are probably two or three people that did not come uh, with us, because this is a significant project also for us uh, in terms of the work that we do. Uh, of course, we have our leadership here. Uh, the, 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 almost the entire members of the EXCO team is here. I think there's just one, two people who did not come. So Prof. Morris, um, who is the head of the school, uh, Logan, who is the head of our academic programs, uh, Setumo, who is the head of our operations, Terence, who is the head of the finances. I learned that he's the budget holder. Um, and that means a lot to us. You know, if you have to Play nice with the budget world. <laughs> so he's here, I'm mentioning his name. And then of course, we've got our colleague from uh, marketing uh, who is also here. But I think I'm mentioning this to show that we are part of a, a larger school. KFC is not a standalone um, entity. We are part of the school and part of the mission of the school 
is really to become one of the best in Africa and one of the best in the world. Through all the issues that we're discussing, we've got various centers on digital uh, business, on leadership, energy transitions, all the issues that we're discussing here are issues that the school and the university is actually dealing with. And so uh, that integration of philanthropy into these various programs is important for us. Uh, there were various uh, committees that assisted in the curation of the conference. Even though I chaired the planning of the conference, I want to thank Briggs, who actually managed the program. And I think when there's no program, there's no conference. And I wanted to take just a minute, Briggs, to, to bring you up here so that you can say a few words to the team that you worked with, because I know that's an important uh, component. You want to write? No. Oh, OK, OK, OK. OK, great. All right, thanks, Becky. And uh, as we are wrapping up, I've got a few facts that we must cheer for. The first one is that there were 43 countries represented at this conference. It's a big number. Uh, the second one is that we curated uh, five keynotes uh, from Wednesday to the end of the conference now. And of the five keynotes, three were women and two were men. That's a fact <laughs> to cheer for. And we had, um, we had 17 speakers on our plenary sessions. And of the 17 speakers on the plenary sessions, Eight were men, nine were women. So it speaks to uh, the constant journey of improvement uh, that, um, that uh, we are engaged in. And also, uh, a real big fact to cheer for is that through your own individual efforts, as people who came to uh, 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 this conference and who were part of contributing to the development of the program, you organized with 22 independently organized side sessions. That's a big number to cheer for. <laughs> then, Becky, as I um, uh, sit down, I would really like uh, us to acknowledge the core team that worked uh, on the program of this conference. Uh, it was uh, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and they are here amongst us. So first of all, the first uh, culprit, Rugeto, where are you? Please, if you can just step forward. You are right there at the back. Please come, 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 come. There's something that we want the photographers to do before you sit down. So please come, Rugeto. Rugeto is a program officer at Trust Africa. She was part of the core program team that sometimes would meet for six hours nonstop just to get the program uh, to take place. Uh, I would also like to call a very powerful woman. I only got to know of her very recently. Uh, she's one of the, maybe the latest intern at Trust Africa. Her name is Aja. Aja, please come forward. <laughs> this is a very powerful woman. She, she joined Trust Africa and hit the ground running, and she was such a pleasure to work with in developing the program. Even if people had to meet at 9 p.m., she would be right there. So my God, people have to redefine what an intern is. A big end to a very powerful woman. Uh, I would also want uh, to bring forward Ogo. Ogo, where are you? Step forward, Ogo. Uh, at a certain point, uh, Rugeto wasn't feeling very well. Ogo just stepped in, picked up all the pieces, and started running with it, uh, just like that. So extremely powerful. I'd also like to bring Wycliffe uh, from Capsi, who was part of the core team. Wycliffe, please, please step forward. Uh, and as I'm doing that, photographers, please get ready. Uh, so yeah, we would like to bring Wycliffe. I also want to bring a miracle worker to step forward. Gladys, a lot of things were imposed on you, and you really just took that ball, ran with it, uh, and uh, you know it was extremely, extremely uh, impressive. Uh, and can I also invite Misha? You've seen her, so please. Gladys and Misha are in the in the in the in-country team. 
So that's why a lot ended up having to fall on you. But please, it's important that we recognize uh, their efforts. Uh, then a uh, team leader for bus number six yesterday, if they are in the house, please step forward. Team leader for bus number six. <laughs> that's Ashley. Yeah, I think he's outside organizing uh, certain things. And the reason why I'm bringing these colleagues forward, it's not to say they are the, I mean, you've heard from Ebrima and you've heard from Becky that it took a lot of people bringing in different pieces. But I do know, uh, as someone who was uh, chairing the curation of the program for this conference, what they went through in terms of taking us to where we, uh, we got today. So please, your, your, our photographers, a nice photo for this powerful team. No, pause for it. And thank you very much. Thank you very much, Becky. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, you, you, please you, can, come up. you can Photoshop him into yeah, the yeah, yeah. into the picture. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Hmm? Hmm? Oh, yeah, yeah, let me do that. Yeah. Mm. Mm. All right. So this, this team was mostly uh, pushing on the program and a bit of the logistics. Becky has promised me that he's going to, yeah, yeah. before he uh, sits down, bring all our teams to be up here. So, yeah, that's coming. Thank you very much. That's coming. Thank you. Okay. Um, oh, you're still. <laughs> you are still uh, photographing. Okay. Thank you so much. So that was the programs uh, committee, and I thought it was important for us to bring them up here. Uh, because it really is at the heart of what this is about. And of course, there are other people that were involved uh, that um, I think, um, you know, as, as I go through, I'm going to bring them, I mean, to mention their names, not necessarily bring them up. But the logistics team, Bricks has already mentioned some of the colleagues who were there, uh, also played a huge, huge role for us to be here. Uh, of course, some of you already now know the familiar names, FISO. Uh, especially for those that uh, have been, uh, you know, so FISO has really been somebody that has been doing a lot of work from the logistics team. Um, I think you have heard about Misha, you have heard about Gladys, Roketo, Archer, Letu, uh, most of you that uh, have seen her around here. She's been integral, both in the, in, in the program side, in the communication side, but also in the logistics uh, side as well. Um, and then, of course, Charles. Uh, some of you might have seen Charles. Charles is, and Oswald are the ones who are behind the creation and the development of the conference site uh, and all the innovations that we are trying to, to have uh, in the site. So I, I think Charles and Oswald are still here. But Oswald was also the person that was presenting on AI yesterday. So he's not just a developer for CAPS, he's also uh, somebody that does this work for a living. Uh, Tandy, that most of you have seen running around with keynotes, but she was also part of the exhibition committee. I saw her dance last night here, Chipilani. <laughs> Those of you that don't know Chipilani is the Tsonga uh, dance, and so she was uh, showcasing a bit of that yesterday here. Uh, Melody was also part of the, um, the, the awards committee. You have mentioned Ogo. Uh, but there are also people that um, you may not see, but they've also been very instrumental in some of this work. Isa uh, Ibrahima from, the, from Trust Africa, who have been managing the finances. Uh, for the first time, we actually ins tried to um, go with a combination of two models, um, paid uh, up uh, attendance and funded attendance. And of course, as we are trying to go through this, they, they, they always be back and forth, people registering, paying, and then saying, oh, we, we can no longer make it. Can you please refund, or can you do this? And so Isa and uh, Ibrahim Tepo have been the people behind that, communicating with most of you regarding some of the challenges that you might have had, uh, either in registering or in making payments. So I want to thank Isa, Ibrahim, and Tepo. I, I know Isa is here, but I, don't, I've, I haven't seen Ibrahim. 
Uh, Issa, I don't know where you are. There. 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 Issa is there. Um, I think it would be uh, a miss of me if I don't thank uh, the logist as part of the logistics team to thank John Lin. Um, I, I have not seen someone who is as calm as John Lin under stress. Um, so John Lin, I will call on you at some point to come up here. Prudence as well as uh, Megan, uh, who work closely with John Lin. There was an academic session site, which of course was, as you saw, Whitecliffe come up here, but he didn't work alone. He worked with Jacob, who is the deputy at CAPSI. He also worked with the reviewers that uh, went through all the abstracts that were selected. Some of them are here, Tele, Melody, and many others who are part of the uh, team that was presenting uh, at the academic conference. So I want to thank the reviewers. I want to thank the team that worked on the academic uh, session. Um, and, and there are people here like Messi, Joseph, um, who also were part of that team. I, I don't know where they are, but they are part of the CAPSI team as well. I want to thank the, uh, our funders for the conference. Uh, like I said the other day, all of us are funded differently and we, pro, we, we program uh, part of this work as part of what we are implementing. And so I thank all the funders for the different institutions because they allow us the possibility to have partners contribute financially to the success of the conference. And so all the partners that I mentioned are actually donors of this conference. So I want to thank our partners first, but I also want to thank other donors like the Ford Foundation that gave specific funding towards this conference, MacArthur Foundation colleagues here that also gave specific funding towards this conference, and the Mott Foundation that also supported the attendance of some of our researchers. So I wanted to thank those in particular, but also broadly, like I said, we are funded by different uh, donors and, and, and part of that money comes into, into this. I want to thank you, uh, esteemed delegates, uh, for coming here and really spending five days uh, off your busy schedules to be just here in conversations with uh, each other. So a big thanks to ourselves, and if we could give ourselves a big bird. I think the keynotes and the plenary speakers and those in the parallel sessions, uh, I think that also is something that we need to uh, actually thank uh, immensely because without speakers, um, I think we would probably just be networking, which would be an important component of the conference, but we really needed some, people, some of you to guide us uh, in the thoughts that we're working on. Um, I also want to mention a special thanks to the comms team. I mentioned Letu, but Letu was working with all the partner communication specialists in the different organizations. And so Letu, Abda, Tarisai, um, special thanks to you and those that uh, were in the other institutions as well. Um, the interpreters, um, you know, uh, thank you so much. Uh, you have also been seeing the audiovisual guys from Vickstrom. Uh, thank you so much for the work that you are doing. There are a lot of colleagues that have been asking, where am I going to get the visuals? And I'm hoping that um, the, uh, there was a story of somebody who actually did a recording of the entire conference. And when they got home, they were told, that guy forgot to press the, the button. <laughs> so I'm hoping that uh, our colleagues here did not forget to press the button. <laughs> but thank you so much, uh, colleagues from Vickstrom, for the audio visuals that we are going to enjoy after uh, this conference. The artists, um, we start with Opet Dube, who gave us the opening and the closing. Uh, the artists at the gala dinner, um, um, you know, the artists that performed last night here, I think it's also uh, something that has become a culture of this conference to actually have uh, wellness music as part of uh, our conferencing. Um, but I think most importantly, can we all put, a, put up a standing gratitude to Nozipo? <laughs> Nozipo, for three days, she has been steering us 
throughout uh, these days um, to manage the program, at times under difficult conditions, especially this morning, I, I could see she was struggling to stop Brian uh, from speaking. <laughs> but I think that's the nature of facilitation, uh, to make sure that you, know, you, you, you keep on bringing everyone, not just to time management, but also to the substance uh, of the conference. And I think colleagues that have been here for the past three days, you have had an experience uh, of what a conversation strategist does. Um, so we, we, we probably have to introduce this tightly into our career uh, guidance and development. At this juncture, can I please request Theo, John Lynn, Sarah, and Nozipo to come up? Yeah, I'm told organizers have uh, a small token uh, to give. Theo, if she's here, Theo Soa, Sarah Mkasa, John Lynn, and Nozipo. Okay, if Sarah is not here, don't worry. Uh, Theo is going to represent Sarah. Uh, okay, I think you'll do the end over. Yeah, okay. So, what do you, you just, you just oh, go ahead. Okay, so this is to thank you um, for the roles that you've been playing. Of course, John Lynn for leading the logistics team and managing it till now. I don't know if you, uh, you recognize that. I mean, I don't know for most of the passes, and, but this was the idea. The idea was that no one gets off the passes, we go to, to Zambia and come back. Uh, John Lynn and team would have managed that swift transition. It happened for us in our pass, pass number six. Uh, pass number six, we didn't step on the, uh, right? We, we sat there, uh, Ashley and team took the passports, they went, they got them stamped, and we, we went off to Zambia. On our way back, they just opened the gates on the Zambian side, and then again, they took the passports to the Zimbabwean side, and that was it. Um, and I think other passes also might have experienced that, not all of them, but the idea was that we are going to just pass and come back, and that happened. So thank you so much, John Lynn. Thank you. So, so, so Brima and I had talked, and uh, John Lynn's was supposed to be a surprise. But oh, we, are, we are here now, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I was told these are the four people. Thank you. Thank you very much. She's a powerful woman. We all know that. I can't. Thank you. Next okay. I, then I just wanted to, sorry, wanted to thank Theo uh, for managing the conversation with Mom on that night. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant conversation. But also for being the face of CAPSI. Uh, you have so many heads, but in this conference, you were CAPSI. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, we wanted to thank Sarah uh, for her role uh, as the chair of the awards committee. Uh, and I think the awards, as you noticed, is one of the prominent features of this conference now. Uh, so thank you, Sarah. Um, and, and Theo is going to uh, accept the token on your behalf. And of course, we want to thank Nozipo for the brilliant, 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 brilliant moderation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. As I announce, as I make the last announcement, can I ask all the. Oh, you still have to take pictures. Okay. As I move to the last announcement, can I ask all the staff members of all the participating. Um, organizations, including the, the leaders of the partners, uh, to, as soon as I, I, I finish the announcement, to come up so that we can have an appreciation of the people behind. And that will include the Vets Business School, uh, because we are part of the big family. 
So we are, uh, as Ivan was ex explaining, so what the networks in their different membership uh, spaces are organizing, uh, which also builds up to this event where we actually say collectively, let's all come together. You might be a membership-based organization that does work in East Africa, or you might be doing continentally, but you are a membership-based organization. At just one moment in the year, let's come together and collectively set the agenda but also learn from each other in terms of what you have done, but also what you are yet to do. Uh, we are moving to our sixth uh, African Philanthropic Conference, uh, and this time around we're going to hold it in a different region because the idea is also to rotate uh, with the region so that we also get to learn more about that region, to explore the philanthropy that exists in that region, but also to create partnerships also with that region. So can I ask the team to to play uh, where we're going next. North Africa it is, uh, Cairo it is, unless things change, obviously we will, uh, will update colleagues, but that's where we're going. Uh, we have partners there that we have already alerted that we'll be working with to map out the details, but we'll see you next year uh, from the 28th of July to the 1st of August in Egypt, Cairo, North Africa. At this juncture, can I call on all the staff members, the leadership of the various in institutions to come up, please? Trust Africa colleagues, CAPSI, APF, APN, East Africa Philanthropy Network, Zambia Governance Foundation. Please, let's come up, Vest Business School. Everybody. If we can move a bit faster so that we can go to lunch and buses. Thank you, thank you. Let's move up. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Who? Me? No, no. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course we have to come. Let's try and move faster, colleagues, those who are coming up, please, faster. Okay, do you have everyone? Okay. Where is Led to Kuklano Mudi? Are they here? Terence? They are not here. Okay, I think we should just proceed. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I will hand over back to Nozipo for any announcements uh, to be made. Thank you so much and uh, safe travels to everyone going back home. Thank you. Thank
Thank you very much, Prof. Round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, with that, Ingu Kuko for the very last time. Let's give them a big round of applause, please.